Chapter 3 talks about presenting GIS data. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about projections for the most part, but we'll mention a couple of things about colors and things like that. The end product of most GIS analysis is going to be a map. A map is going to be a reflection of all of your analysis. So if you don't use the right colors or the right projections or your map doesn't look good, then people are going to have an opinion of the analysis no matter how good it is here. You can see in this exercise or this example, we, we're looking at the his Hispanic population in the United States. And we can see we have a blank map right here. It's all purple here. And you can see the projection that we have here is what we call a geographic projection. A projection is the method by which we put a three, 3D surface, such as the Earth or the United States, onto a 2D surface, such as a flat map here that eventually we're going to print out. And here we're looking at in digital format. When you look at this geographic projection, which basically stores things as latitudes and longitudes, you can see it's, the United States is very elongated. This is really unacceptable for any cartographic or digital, digital cartographic product. Typically, we want to make maps that have some semblance of a projection which portray real-world areas, real-world problems, so we can have things that so each state looks like the same area or same shape and things like that. So we can go through and change that a couple of different ways. When I look at the states and go down to my properties right here, you can see the projection right here. And there's techniques where I can go through and change the actual projection of the United States, or I could just change that the way it's viewed. And when I go through and look at my layers, and I can look at my properties of these layers right here, you can see the tabs look a little different here. And I can look at the coordinate system. So what we're going to be doing right here is we're not going to actually change the projection. We're just going to change the way that we view it. This is something new in the last 10 years with GIS software. Typically, everything needed to be in the same exact projection so it could be superimposed on top of each other. These days, if we declare a projection, it knows that it's latitude and longitude or northing and easting and feet or meters or whatever. It can auto-project on the fly and show them in a projection that we want here. So you can see right here, this is GCS, Geographic Coordinate System, and the datum. We'll talk about that later, but I can go to different projected and geographic coordinate systems. In this case, I'm going to go to Projected Coordinate System, and I'm going to go to Continental, and I'm going to look at North America. And you can see we have a lot of different North American equal area projections. The whole goal of a projection is to show a particular area with as minimal distortion as possible. I can go to state plane coordinate systems, and that'll just, we'll have North Carolina state planes, which minimizes the state, minimizes the distortion for the state of North Carolina. States such as Texas have five different projections. Idaho has three different projections. Alaska has a number of projections because these states are a little bit larger here, and the shapes of them are a little bit different. But right here, I have North America, Albers, equal area conic. Basically, we're trying to maintain, and as we talked about in projections, when we project a map, we're going to have some sort of size, area, shape, and azimuthal, which is direction distortion right here. Here, North America equal area conic, basically, we try to minimize the distortion of the areas right here. And you can see here, I can zoom into this particular area. I can zoom in using my zoom out tool, so we can see Alaska. For this, I'm going to just show them in the lower 48 states. I can use my pan to kind of center it a little bit. So I can have a projection right here. A projection like this would be more than acceptable. For North Carolina, if we wanted to focus on North Carolina, we would change it to the North Carolina, uh, North Carolina State Plane Projection. So I can go to Projected. I can go down here to State Plane. I can go to the units here, which is feet. And I can look at North Carolina right here. I have New York. I have a number of different New York ones, but you can see North Carolina. So I, if I just wanted to focus on North Carolina. Now, you notice here, for the rest of the United States, it's a little bit tilted. It doesn't care about the rest of the United States. All it cares about is looking at North Carolina right here. And when I zoom into North Carolina, you can see exactly what it looks like here. So I'm going to go back and show my Albers equal area at the North, uh, North America projection here. So I'm going to go to North America. Okay, here I'm in my geographic. I want to go to my projected, continental, North America, North America, Albers equal area. Okay, and I'm going to zoom back out here a little bit so I can show the entire United States here. 
Uh, and you can see I have other elements of map design here. Uh, you can see that I have a scale bar, I have a north arrow, and I have a title. Now the next thing that I want to show is particular colors here. And when I go to symbology right here, I can go to categories, and here I'm going to create a core pleth map with graduated colors here. And I'm going to look at the Hispanic population right here. And you can see right here, Hispanic is just going to be the total number of Hispanic people by this enumeration unit, which is the state. Is that going to be overly useful? Probably not, because obviously bigger states are going to have a higher percentage or more Hispanic people than smaller states or less populous states. So here, under normalization, I can click on 2003. So now here, in this label right here, I have percent. And I can format my label. So this is the number of Hispanics divided by the population 2000, which is for this year right here. Now I can format my labels right here. So I can click on label, format labels, and I can go through and click on percent because we know what 0.2526 is. That's a percent. And then I can click on percentage. And as I can say this number already represents a percent or this number represents a fraction. Adjust to show it. And I can do right here. And then I can click on my numeric options because I don't want to show four, four, number, four numbers behind the decimal point. So I can go through and change the number of decimal points that I want to show. And I can change that to two decimal places. And I can click OK and OK. Also, it's very important the types of colors that we show right here. So I can show them in brown or blue. Blue take This yellow to blue takes more advantage of the spectrum here while also showing graduated colors right here. I can show green right here. The type of colors, a lot of colors are going to have different internal, internal contrasts. So your greens and your purples are going to have a lot of internal contrast, meaning that the difference between lightest and darkest, we can show more colors between them. We can probably show up to seven, eight, or even nine different classes. Other colors, such as a gray scale from white to black, or maybe even your blues, your, uh, e maybe even your blues are going to have less internal contrast here. For here, I'm just going to click on my green right here, and here I do. Here I have it here. Last thing that I have right here is this says over here in the title it says Hispanic divided by pop 2000. If I'm making a map and showing people, I really don't want to show that. I just want to show percent. Hispanic. When I click the change here, I can change here. You also see here, this says states. Okay, right here. And basically, we're showing here the enumeration unit. If we see this map right here, you can see that it's pretty obvious that the states, uh, these are states here. So I can double click on my legend, and I can click on states right here in the legend theme, and click on style. And I can c go through and check the style. So under the heading right here, you can see here I have a legend heading and label. So it'll get rid of that states for me because looking at it, we should know that these are states. And this has been changed here. So now we can see here the highest percentage of Hispanic populations in states such as Texas, New Mexico right here, which wouldn't be that high if we were to show the total Hispanic population. California, Nevada, Colorado, New York over here, and then Florida. And then from here, once we make this map and we're happy with this map, we can export it and then insert it into our documents or whatever we're working with.